Hi, this is Mr. Morris, and today we're going to talk about slope and rate of change. Now, I will use an asterisk, sort of like a bullet point, to indicate that I'm kind of in a new idea or thought. So slope, we always use the letter M to indicate slope. And graphically, we'll look at it as rise over run. So this is a graphic representation. Now, we can rewrite this as a formula, which is more of an algebraic representation, where rise is the change in y over run, which is the change in x. Now we use delta, which is the symbol uh, in front of the y and the x, which is a triangle, just a Greek letter to mean the change. And rise and y go together because in the Cartesian coordinate plane, y is your vertical and x is your run because in the Cartesian coordinate plane, x is your horizontal axis. This can further be broken down into a formula if you have two points of a line and you want to calculate the slope between those two points you use y2 minus y1 which gives you the vertical distance between the two points divided by x2 minus x1 which is the horizontal distance between the two points now over here I will draw a representation of both of these ways of looking at slope and actually let me write algebraic here so if I have a line that goes in here that's supposed to be a little more straight And I want to calculate the slope between these two points. If I'm just simply using rise and run or graphical representation, rise will be how far it is from this point vertically. I guess I need to go a little further. To that point. That would be your rise. All right. Now, the run would be how far it is horizontally from this point to this point, but I'm going to draw it up here. So that would be your run. So now let me relate that back to delta y over delta x. All right. The rise, this distance from here to here is your vertical rise between these two points. So I would have to take this y value, which let me go ahead and also label these. This would be x2, y2, and this would be x1, y1. So there are your two ordered pairs. So this distance vertically from here to here, I would have to take this distance from here all the way to here, which is y2, and subtract this distance here to here, which is y1. And that is why the rise is the same as y2 minus y1. For similar reasons, we look at the horizontal change. And the distance from here to here, just the red piece, I would have to subtract from x2, x1, because from here to here is x2, that whole distance. From here to here is x1. Subtracting x2 minus x1 then gives me the run. So there are four really different ways that we can look at the slopes of lines.
if I want a positive slope, that rises left to right, I'll have a drawing like this. Now, I could really draw that anywhere in the Cartesian coordinate plane as long as it's going uphill from left to right. Another word for rises is increasing. So remember, we're always looking these from left to right. Now, a negative slope then would we would call that falling or falls from left to right. We could also use the word decreases. And the drawing would look something like this. The line would go down like that. Now these lines are supposed to be straight, so my drawings aren't the best sometimes. So this line right here decreases or has a negative slope. You could have what's called a zero slope. Which then is horizontal. So you'd have something that looks like that. So that line right there would be horizontal. And the last one would be an undefined slope. which would be vertical. Whoops, that's a little crooked, but it's supposed to be perfectly straight up and down. So really those are the four types, rise, fall, horizontal, or vertical. Now they can be steeper and that's how they change depending on the value of the slope, but those are your four different types. All right, now let's do a couple examples. We're going to determine the slope from the graph. Now with this graph, all I need to do is count rise divided by run. So I'll use M again, which equals and now, if you're having a hard time remembering formulas, every time you use a formula, write it down. So for instance, rise over run. Now, on the graph, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3. So that's positive 3. Now, the way I always do this is... I start at the left point and go to the right point. And so we always go left to right. Now you can choose any two points on a graph. Here we only have two. If you go up first, the top number is positive. If you go down first, the top number is negative. And that takes care of whether you have a positive or a negative slope. Then you always travel to the right from there. And the bottom number is always positive. And so in this case, again, we went up, rise, one, two, three, over, or run one. So it's three over one, and we always reduce so the slope is three. All right, now the next example find the slope of the line passing through the points, determine if it rises, falls, is horizontal, or vertical. Now, with these ordered pairs, I'm going to use the slope formula m equals y2 minus y1 over 
x2 minus x1. Now, I'm going to label this point x1, y1, and this one x2. Whoops, made a little mistake there I will fix. Sorry about that. That will be x2 and then y2. All right, so when we plug right into these formulas, or actually just this formula, it's y2 minus y1. Now be careful with your signs. It's going to be negative 6 minus a negative 4. That's y2 minus y1. x2 minus x1 will be 1 minus 3. Now we can rewrite this as negative 6 plus 4. Now that's because a minus and a minus become a plus. So that's a plus right there. Divided by negative 2. Now negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2 over negative 2, and we'll reduce this. So negative 2 over negative 2, this will equal 1. And since this is a positive slope, the graph, if we were to draw it, rises. Now notice when we calculate the slope, the denominator here can be negative using the slope formula. When we find the slope from a graph, the way I do it is I always have the bottom be positive and deal with the negative in the top by either going up or down first. A couple last ideas we have to talk about is parallel lines have exactly the same slope. All right, now I've left the symbol here for parallel, and you're welcome to use that instead of writing the word. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes, and here's the symbol for perpendicular, so you're welcome to use that. Here are a couple of examples of opposite reciprocal slopes. So two-thirds is the opposite reciprocal of negative three-halves. Three is the opposite reciprocal of negative one-third. Two would be the opposite reciprocal of negative one-half. The line with the highest absolute value for slope is always steeper. So that concludes this screencast for slope. We'll talk more about it in class the next time we meet. Thank you.